just from yesterday. I don't know why this thing's digitizing so much when it's playing through. But uh, let me just uh, show you a couple things here that are really, really good. Some couple things I see that are really starting to settle in. At the top of your leg kick, you should have already begun moving forward. This was something we talked about the other day. So right there, right there is the top of your leg kick. Now let's just put this line on you right here. And let's notice how far forward you moved at the top of your leg kick. See, so just looking at it here, it's not a tremendous amount. You see, it's only maybe uh, six, eight inches. But from that moment that you lift, your hips and your spine have to start traveling towards your target. You are still wanting to get most of your movement to your target on the way down. Notice how far forward you move on the way down. See, and that dropping on the way down isn't a bad thing, but the more we can travel at the top, then all you have to do is just let your leg hit the ground. That's the first thing. That's better. You were, and I can put you another video of a, another rep just last week up here, and when you kick, when you kick your leg right there, you stay perfectly still. You can really notice it right there in your hips. And that's what the Hersheiser drill, how when we lift and put your hip against the wall, that whole objective of that is to teach your body to get your hip line right through there, all moving that way at the moment that you get to the, you know, your, your leg kick, you get to the top. Next, let's talk about the timing. From foot strike, foot strike is right here where your plant foot, right there. Some people are going to tell you you got to land on the toe. Some people are going to tell you you got to land on the heel. I don't really care where how you land, toe or heel, ball of the foot. But there are a couple little things here. You've got your, it looks like you're trying to line your toes and everything up to be facing at your target that way. Hip and shoulder separation. This is what I was telling you about yesterday. 80% of your power comes from hip and shoulder separation. So if we can keep that toe a little bit behind, maybe so that you're not going to get to that full extended point there until your hips fire, that will help you to let your shoulders drag some. So if I just move you here, there's foot strike. Now notice right in this little region right here, the next thing that should happen should be your hips turn. Notice your hips did a beautiful job of turning. The line across your, your leg, you notice from right here, has changed dramatically. See how your hip, as you were right here, your knee right in this area is facing at me, facing at you right now. When you land, as soon as you land on that foot, that hip is gonna turn, it's gonna rotate in a circular manner going like that, going that way. And that's what causes your right knee right here. Notice how your right knee is no longer facing me. It's pointed down at the ground, which is good. That means your hips have turned and you're settled up. What we're talking about now is separating your hips and your shoulders. This is what we do from rocker position. This is simulating this. It's simulating foot strike. Now when you hit the ground, when your foot hits the ground right there and your hips fire and turn to get you that way, your shoulders have to stay the same. Your shoulders can't turn with your hips. That is where you create hip and shoulder separation. So see, so your shoulders are still connected a little bit to your hips. If you could let your shoulders lag behind, 40 to 60 degrees of hip and shoulder separation is the norm for MLB pitchers. After your shoulders fire, then the elbow is going to fire. So if you just notice where your elbow is right here, see how it's behind your shoulders, but notice how it's, it's coming along and as your shoulders fire, that elbow lags behind. Good. Eventually now that elbow is going to fire and that should cause your hand to get left behind. And then you see what we call external rotation. Sometimes as the pitcher gets here and most times that hand is laid back on a line sort of like that. So imagine if your hand here was down here on this line right there, then you would have a better sequence going there. After your elbow fires, the last thing that fires is the forearm and the hand to create release. 
your release point looks really good. Your release is right there. Notice that release, your hind leg is still on the ground. The only your, your balance right here is pretty good. The only complaint I got is where your glove is right there. Your glove should be more over here still. Key thing is your release point. Release point should be 8 to 12 inches in front of your plant foot. So you're really getting stretched out there nicely. What we got to do though is just work on our sequence still and slow those hips down. Excuse me, speed those hips up. Slow the shoulders down. And then speed the shoulders up and slow the elbow down. And then slow the elbow down. And excuse me, speed the elbow up and slow the hand down. Like we said yesterday, right? Hips, shoulders, elbow, hand. Hips, shoulders, elbow, hand. From the time you land, right here, it goes boom. Hips, shoulders, elbow, hand. Hand is the last thing that fires, and there's where your power comes from. Anyway, let's focus on continuing to travel forward right here, just to reiterate that. See, you can really see it right there as you lift. Again, if you watch your body right through there, you'll really start to travel. Look how far forward you've traveled. The more we can increase that, the better. Anyway, keep practicing, kid. You're awesome.